welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. I am on Elmer's. Took a ride down the beach on one of those for free. The sun is just rising behind me. I'm really close to the pass. Today I am joined by two other YouTubers. This is my first time to get to fish with Go Bears Outdoors. Yeah, you're right. And then my good friend Ray down at the end here. Ray from Rig PFA. These guys are setting up the fish cut bait for reds, but I am doing something different. I've got a new rod and reel set up here. This is my new tarpon rod. Well, I got this for tarpon, jack, and big bull red, and other big things. This is a eight foot onesie by Daiwa. It is an extra heavy, fast action rod. I've got a 5,050 spin fisher on it, spooled up with 50 pound braid. Got a tuna popper here by Halco. The last time I was out here, I was seriously undermatched. I should have been out here with something like this, but I was out here with medium heavy rods that I mostly use for inshore stuff. And I was using 2,500 size reels. I was able to get a bull red in on a gotcha plug, but I got spooled <laughs> probably by a jack. So I'm out here to not get spooled. I'm out here to get that jack. It is 70 degrees right now, but it's gonna come up to 84 out here. I'm gonna wade fish this. Now, usually these top wire poppers work good in the morning. And right now I am looking for blow ups out here. I think there might be one in front of me that I can't see real good because I saw birds diving there. So we might just be throwing this willy nilly to start. I've never fished this far down the beach, so I've, I don't know where the breaker is. I think there is one in front of us. We're, we're, we just walked over a small trench. Definitely gonna be going past where these waves are breaking first. The last time I was out here, I know there were jack and I know there was tarpon. I saw someone lose what may have been a 100 pound tarpon further down there closer to the parking lot and i know that someone that is a friend of ray's did catch a a nice jack right off the beach here but they were in a boat and that's probably what spooled me and also the last time i was here i i believe it's called sargasm it's like sarcasm and an orgasm all together it's a type of grass it was everywhere here and it's everywhere in pensacola from what i hear because Ray was out there yesterday and he said that the beaches are just full of it. These waves are getting kind of rough. I changed my mind. I'm going to have to walk down the beach and look for blow-ups. Looks like it's going to get calmer as I come down. We're walking towards the pass, which is maybe a 10-minute walk. I'm going to leave these guys behind. I just don't see any topwater action, so we're going to switch things up switch to a what we call a drone spoon it's also called a pet spoon i put my hand on it so you can get an idea of the size it is about a six inch spoon good amount of weight there i have this on a 50 weight fluorocarbon leader to a pretty heavy duty barrel swivel there were some boats right here that's not really why i stopped i stopped because i saw birds diving a lot i think the fish are here they're just not feeding off the surface the water is a lot dirtier than it was the last time I was here which I'm not surprised I kind of expected it to be about like this because of uh, current weather or the weather we just got through I have been down the beach and up the beach throwing different things nothing's working out the water's pretty dirty but there is a lot of shrimp here I have some ideas these guys have done kind of good since we left catching black drum and having big hits on the cut bait and live bait i got some shrimp in the net ray had the same idea and has already put some shrimp in my bucket so yeah you're right problem is each net is going to pull up not just shrimp like this right here but baby pompano like these down here 
I think something's up with that rod. So we're gonna put this on a 10 knot circle hook here, pretty big. I'm just lucky that I got a good size one. These are illegal bait. I'm gonna hook them right behind the head here. There we go, something like that. Check it out. Now we got this on 135 pound test, metal stringer, wire, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm tired. Steel, steel leader, that's what I would try to say. Jeez, goodness me. I have had enough sleep, but man. Yeah, you're right, three ounces of lead to start. I've got this on a 65 pound braid, and this is on one of my reels that a subscriber sent me. This is an Akuma CBF 65 bait runner. Let's get it out there. This is the first time fishing with this reel and this rod. This is an 11 foot heavy action ugly stick. I've had it for a good few months now, like maybe six months. It's the first time fishing with this combo. I'm pretty excited. Let's see what we can get. It's gonna come out a good ways. We're on the first breaker. We're waiting till we get to where it starts to drop off. This water is looking a lot better, but it's still rough. But it's getting cleaner looking. I can actually see big number one crabs around my feet. Now we're getting into deep water here. I think it's going to steadily drop. I'm going to go ahead and just lob it out there. There's so many crabs out there. Every time you put out a piece of real shrimp, it just goes real quick and this will last a little longer. The crabs are going for this shrimp flavored fish bites though, but we will get another whiting because we're probably going to go through them. Hey, will you bring in that rod? <clears throat> yeah. I was inspecting a slack line with the camera off. Ray had just walked up and asked me if I had any bites. I said, I don't think so, but I keep getting this slack line and all of a sudden he hit. He's right here in front of us. Just a little red. Yeah, it is a nice one. <laughs> I was doing that on purpose. You're making me work. Good afternoon. I'm making you work. Real quick show off, guys. I'm going to let this fish go. Wow, exciting. Yeah, you're right. What a prima donna. What is wrong? There he goes. I think I see a lot of bunker running right through here right now. Some really big crabs. I need to get another whiting i'm gonna fish with it live i want to see if i can get a big shark ray keeps getting shark left and right off a cut bait also i i'm out here wanting to catch 
turf it in, Jack. It might not happen today, but if I stick the live bait, oh, look at that. I need, I should have my cast net out here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. My goodness. Holy moly. Look at how many I got in one net. Look at the size of them. <laughs> Bigger than my thumb, man. Look at that. Look at my wow. Look at the size of these shrimp. Ho ho ho! I got the shrimp, you got the mullet. Oh, and it's jumping out of your net too. Awesome. I put some shrimp in a bag in your cooler uh, for, I'm gonna cook them later. You got, they're falling out. Let's see, we got a big one here. I'll throw it out. Yeah. Woo. Same thing, guys. Actually, this time, I think we will go through the mouth, but only one lip and right there through that plate. There's a lot of activity in here all of a sudden. These shrimp boats are out here as well. The birds are going crazy. This is a good time to get this big live mullet out here. There's probably some feeding going on out there. All right, I got some shrimp for us to cook later on. When we get back to the house, that is if I have the energy probably. Well, let's see if we can put some more in that bag, some more shrimp. We got that live mullet out there. We could do something with that while we're doing this, but I've got the bait runner engaged and I've also got this net tangled up. Let me figure that out. Oh, yes, more, more big shrimp. <clears throat> Left and right, huge schools of mullet have moved into the beach. I could do this left and right, pull up a net like this. These are mostly finger mullet. What? I see, I see, I see. My line is trucking. This is off a of live bait. I was talking to, look who showed up. Jacob is here. Yeah, this fish yanked us down because I, I just put it out there and I hadn't engaged the uh, bait runner. This is off a big live mullet on a tin knot. I am filming, right? You see a red dot? Uh, yeah, on the screen. I was paranoid that I wasn't filming. All right, this is feeling like a bull red. Oh, I felt a head shake. Maybe it's something different. It's been bull red after bull red for the guys over here on cup bait. Fish go right. He may be over your lines or under them, I don't know, but he's over there in front of you.
It's, if this is a bull red, it's a good size one. He should be right about there where that where it's breaking. What do you say? What? You say shark? Oh, it's a shark. It's a shark? Oh, I see it. It's right there in front of Ray. Watch out, Ray! Get out, get, get out of the way! What are you doing dancing with my fish? Is he wrapped around your line? Is he wrapped around it? You all right? It's not a big shark. Did you get a good look at it, Ray? You get a good look? Did you get a good look? Black tip or bull? Yeah, that's that's not a bull shark, I don't think. That's something different than I've ever caught. Black tip, probably. Good looking fish. I don't have a pair of big pliers, but that hook is on the outside. So I'm not 100% sure because I'm not a shark expert. You think it's a sharp nose? I know. All right. <laughs> I'm ready to let him go. I'm pretty pleased. Probably a good 40 pound fish. It going to you, Jacob. All right, now that the conditions out here are much better, the water is much clearer, and I now have about five to eight pounds of shrimp to cook, super huge shrimp. I'm gonna give up on fishing live bait. We're gonna go out to the last breaker with the spoon. You can actually see the shrimp now, but I, I, I don't want any more shrimp. I wanna see if we can get something big. The birds are feeding. There's nothing, there's no blow ups on the surface, but if you look out there, those birds are diving further down. The birds are going nuts. You should be able to get something. Well, I want something. Jacob was way down there looking for trout out in the surf and saw a school of about six jack at about 20 pound a piece, he said. So they're here. All right, we're on the last breaker. It is super calm now, whereas when I first got here this morning, it was kind of rough. Actually, there might be another breaker out there, but I'm not going to it. I can see it a good ways out. I think that's a breaker, but that's kind of far and who knows how deep it is. So we're going to 
just throw this out the wind is a lot better now the casting is better I'm gonna let that fall to the bottom and just basically retrieve it I've never fished this I've never fished a spoon this size before you can I believe you could probably fish it like you would a silver spoon like a Johnson you just kind of pop it a little bit but I've been told that you you just really just need to retrieve it cast and retrieve I I just can't help myself I want to pop it I do see what people are talking about with just retrieving it it has an, a lot of action just retrieving it Oh, I got him. Yes. First fish on this rod and reel combo for me. Took a bunch of casts. I think this might be a redfish actually. This fish hit this spoon twice before he was actually hooked up. I'm just saying it's a red because I saw red when he came up to the top and he's right in front of me, but it could be anything really. Here he is, right there. Oh yeah, whoa, that's a beauty. What a beautiful fish. Wow. I love getting these bull reds on an artificial. That's not a giant either. That's almost a keeper size. Nice, yes. Oh, he's not done, he says. Nice. Look at this. All right, look at the size of these. Let's look at my redfish. Yeah, a pet spoon. Or it's actually a drone spoon, but people also call them pet spoons. Awesome, this is my favorite thing to do now. Get a big bull red on an artificial. But, that's not what I'm really wanting to do. I want either a jack or a tarpon today, but I'm still happy shark and bull red does it for me. Yeah, you're right guys. Come on, let's get them back in there. There he goes, good to go. If you're wondering where I got this rod and reel combo at, I actually picked it up at B&B Tackle in Bell Chase, Louisiana. Really nice people there. So I don't mind if we catch another bull red, but with the tide going out like it is, cause that's what's up, the tide is going out. Things are getting calmer and the water is clearer. Wow, there's huge shrimp here, but I've got about five to eight pounds already and that's enough for me. They're like big jumbo shrimp. Well, I spent an hour out there. I'm taking a break now. We want to check out what Jacob did while I was out there. You, you told me you got a one net with five pounds in it. One yeah. was five That's pounds. more than five pounds right there. That's about maybe 10. You think? 
10, 15. Something like that. That's what he did while we were out there casting that spoon. Got him! Yes! I got a jack, I think. I saw him come up to me. He came right here and he turned around and I all of a sudden I just cast ahead of him. Jacob! I got a jack! I got my jack. At least I think it's a jack. It's not a It's not a redfish. Oh, I think another one is following him. Wouldn't it be cool if there's a gotcha plug in his mouth? Because I think this may have been what spooled me the last time I was out here. He's trying to turn. He had to keep his head turned. Well, his fish has some power, but he's not doing the runs I thought he was going to do. Maybe this rod is just that good, and we get, again. In the beginning of the video, I said what this was. This is a an eight foot extra heavy fast action onesie by Daiwa. And I got 50 pound braid on here. Pretty good braid. He's just going left and right. Well, this is a powerful fish. I'm just holding them. Oh, stepped into a hole here. I'm just backing up slowly. Wow, what a fish. There he goes, got to keep his head turned. He's trying to make a run for it.
Oh yeah. This is a long fight here. I mean, he's just right in front of me and he has been for quite some time, but he still has a lot of power. And I've got Jacob coming up behind us. We're in pretty shallow water now. We're pretty close to the end of this fight. Here we go, there's a good close look at him. Nice jack, huh? What? It is a jack, right? Big old canal too. What? Oh, they call them canal too in Florida. That's a jack. Yeah, I thought it was a jack. That's a good one. This is my first jack, man. I'm gonna even call it a little teeny tiny. Let's, let's go ahead and get him beached and grab him by the back tail. Yeah, you're right. You got him, Jacob. My first jack. Oh, I thought I wasn't going to do it today. I thought I wasn't going to do it. Whoa. Look at that. In the mouth. Oh, yeah. Man, dude, he... I told Deb, and I'm going to tell Jacob... I was out there, I saw him come up to me and he's like, oh no, he turned around and I, I cast right in front of him. I was filming and everything. I cast ahead of him and he grabbed that. Oh yeah, definitely about 30 pounds. Yes, my first jack. Woo! Bull red, shark, and now jack. Can I get a tarp in today? I don't know. I, I really, I would like to experience this again. Okay, so yeah, most of you know these are garbage fish. We just catch them. They are used for process uh, making oil, fish oil. Whoa! But yeah, some people do eat them. Most people don't. It's mostly a sports fish. It's a bucket fish for sure. Oh, um, they don't taste that bad. He's telling me there's something you can do to make them taste good, right? Yeah. That's what he's telling me. It's like a Japanese. Yeah. We are not doing that today. It is actually the next morning. So what's up is I got up at 1 a.m. yesterday. We left at 3 a.m. We didn't get home till just a few minutes before sunset. So did a few things after that. Crashed. Woke up at 4 a.m. this morning. Now we're ready to deal with the shrimp. They've been in the fridge all night. Wow, just a little over six pounds. That's perfect. That's all I really need. All that's in here is shrimp. No water, no ice. So that is a pretty accurate scale. That's what six pounds of shrimp looks like in my sink. I got to rinse that sand off it now. I am not planning on cooking all these this morning. We'll do a dozen for breakfast. And then we're going to put away the rest. I mean, look at the sizes. Look how big they are. That's probably, that's probably not even the biggest ones. I mean, they're absolutely huge. Look at this. 12 shrimp. That's a dozen shrimp right there. Doesn't look like a lot, does it? So let's do a, one, a dozen and a half. Let's do a dozen and a half this morning. After packing them up, I have the total count. Seven and a half dozen of shrimp exactly on the dot. That is cool. We're doing a boil this morning, but I'm not doing a traditional boil. Not really, sort of. So we're doing this in my saucepan. We just have about an, half an inch to an inch of water, something like that. I'm gonna put a tablespoon of that in there. Just hair more, not too much more. Something like that. Start stirring that around. I've got the heat on. I wanna bring that to a boil, but I'm adding other things. We're gonna add slices of lemon. I've got a bunch of lemons I just got from the store. Slice them all up. Kinda of looks cool, all these lemon slices floating in this pan here. We're gonna cover that and let it boil. I'm gonna let it boil for a bit before I add the shrimp as well. 
I'm gonna change my mind. I wasn't gonna add any of this, but let's add some lime juice to that. That's good. If you were here, oh my goodness, it would knock your socks off. That is very aromatic. It just smells really, really good. It's been boiling for about 10 minutes or so. So we just want to let these shrimp stay in here till they go white and pink and they change color. Cover it. I'm not gonna boil them for long. But that, I want that to come back up to a boil, which it's doing right now. And I'm just gonna monitor it, kind of stir it around once it starts to boil again. And I'm gonna take it right off. It's only gonna be boiling for a little bit. You already need to start stirring it. I don't wanna overboil these. I didn't wanna get a big pot going today. This is just the right size. And I wanted them to be very flavorful with the lemon and the lime. They are done, but not ready to eat. I'm gonna put them in this strainer and we wanna stop that cooking process right away. Plus, it's much easier to eat them if they're cooled down. Here we go, whiskers and all. This is gonna be an awesome breakfast. I am burnt a little bit. Oh, that was good. Wow, not too spicy too. I didn't want them spicy today. Oh man. Mm. Yeah, I got burnt yesterday. Not too bad, just a little bit. A little bit more sun than usual on my face, but I'm not burnt out. Looking forward to getting back down there and doing it again, possibly Florida can't wait to get my first tarpon and man oh I want to do Jack again for sure that was so fun down below the description a couple of links one to rig PFA and the other to go bears outdoors the two channels that were with me down there yesterday Ray got way more shrimp than me I, I cut myself off at what I thought was maybe five pounds, but it was a little over six. Oh, wow. I really wanted to focus on that track, and I'm so happy that I got it done. It was a lot of work. We were down there about nine hours. Wow. All right, guys. I am going to go in the other room. going to annihilate that. Try to edit this video. Oh, and crash again. Thanks for watching, subscribing, sharing, liking. I'll see you next time.